about to go the deepest I've ever gone with the grinding wheel. Now it's either gonna work or it's gonna blow up in our face. But first, let's talk about the wheel we're gonna be using. So we're gonna be using a Tirolet Strata Ultra 46 grit G 12 porosity wheel. Now let's break that down. A wheel is rated on a scale between A to Z and G is gonna be the softest wheel we've ever used here. Let's talk about how open this wheel is that's gonna make it cool cutting. So come on, come here. So since it's a G wheel and it's gonna be the softest wheel we've ever used on this channel, I can easily break this wheel down using my fingernail. So how can a wheel this soft take an inch and a half depth of cut? Well, let's go unlock the red box and I'll show you the true potential of the blown Profimat XT. So come check this out. So what this is, we have our wheel, we've got an overhead dresser, we've got the coolant nozzle, We've got a wheel scrubber and we've got the main coolant line. So all these components right here, that's what's gonna give us the power and the tooling necessary to be able to take an inch and a half depth of cut. So let's take a closer look at our continuous dresser. So as the wheel is spinning, our continuous dressing row is actually gonna come down and it's all gonna be moving in one fluid motion. What's gonna happen is the dressing diamond is gonna take contact with the wheel and that's gonna be dressing our wheel, making it sharp while the wheel is in contact with the material. That's all gonna be happening simultaneously. Let's go ahead and talk about a wheel scrubber. Now what a wheel scrubber is, imagine your gutter system in your house. You get all kinds of leaves inside your gutter system. You wanna be a high pressure water hose to basically flush out that line. That way you don't get any clogs. So as the wheel's grinding, it actually gets metal embedded into the pores of the grinding wheel. Now we don't really want that because that can clog up our wheel and give us a dull cutting edge. Now we also have the continuous dresser that's gonna dress some of that off but with the wheel scrubber, it's gonna keep our wheel nice and clean. So it's nothing fancy, it sits on top of our main coolant line. As the wheel is spinning, it's actually making first contact with the wheel. So through these four nozzles, it's gonna have high pressure coolant that's gonna blow out our grinding wheel and basically clean our gutters. Now under that is gonna be our main coolant line. So the issue we're gonna have with this, this is square. This is gonna be a V groove, so we're gonna have a hard time getting the coolant, not only to the bottom, but to the sides. That's gonna be a major part of grinding. Proper coolant placement and proper coolant velocity plays a humongous part in grinding. Let's go ahead and talk to Trevor and see if he can get us a 3D printed nozzle. That way it can match the contour of our form. So it'll make sense when we're at the machine. So the contour of the wheel actually has a V in it from our diamond dresser. But the problem I have is my coolant nozzle straight. Now I was thinking that we could 3D print something, but when I talked to you now at grinding, they actually has some huge customers that tried this, but it exploded. But I think we can do it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what they were using, but our printers are actually able to reinforce the part with continuous fiber to make it super stiff and strong. So I'm confident it would work. Let's go model something up in SolidWorks and give it a shot. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. Now the first step in modeling our nozzle is to draw the V-shape of the wheel. From there, all we did was we lofted it into the shape that connects to the grinding machine. One important thing about this is this guide curve right here. That's gonna essentially carry that V shape throughout the nozzle, and that's gonna provide clearance for our wheel so that we can position the nozzle where it needs to be without it rubbing. Now from there, all we really did was we shelled it to create our inside opening, and after that, all we had to do was add our connecting features to allow us to bolt it to the grinding machine, as well as our through hole to allow coolant to pass through. And at this point, we're essentially ready to print ourselves a prototype and see how everything looks. Oh man, I'm excited to announce that we have a new feature on our website for Mark Forge for the world of additive manufacturing. Now you guys can actually come to our website and you can request a quote and request more information and we will get that to you. When you come through Titans of CNC for your 3D printing needs, you help not only yourselves by getting an amazing product of the best quality and technology, but you're also helping our platform change this industry. So go over to titansofcnc.com, check out our new additive section, look at all the information and hit that quote button and we will get right back to you guys. Thank you guys so much. Additive is in the house, boom. All right, so I got your prototype nozzle, but it's PLA, so I don't know if it's gonna be strong enough. What's well, the worst that could happen? I mean, it could blow up, so there's always that. Oh yeah, that fits perfectly. All right, so our PLA prototype looks great for fitment and clearance, but we know it's not gonna be strong enough. So let's hop into Iger, and I'll show you how we're gonna reinforce this nozzle with carbon fiber to make sure it doesn't fail. 
So if we go to a translucent view, you'll see blue stripes all throughout our nozzle. That's actually continuous carbon fiber that's been routed throughout to increase the strength and stiffness. Now, we chose this routing strategy because all the forces are going to be pushing out on the inside faces of our nozzle. So we wrap the carbon fiber around it to counteract those forces. Now, you'll also notice that the print orientation of our nozzle is in the same direction that the coolant's going to be flowing. That's because our coolant's going to take the path of least resistance, so we wanted our weakest print direction to be parallel with our coolant flow because that's going to be the direction that has the least amount of force applied to it. All right, so now that we're confident in the strength of our nozzle, let's go ahead and get it back to Chris so he can get to grinding. So as you can see, the V matches up perfectly with the V of our grinding wheel. So real quick, I want to talk about the nozzle. United Grinding had a customer that tried to 3D print their own coolant nozzles, but it ended up exploding due to the high amounts of pressure coming through the line. But an advantage we have and Mark Forge has is that this coolant nozzle has carbon fiber reinforcement and that's gonna make it a lot stronger. So now that we got it installed, let's go ahead and close our door and test it. I think that worked out great. Let's go ahead and close the door, get to grinding. A big factor that comes into play with this is gonna be the continuous dresser. As this wheel is grinding across, it's actually dressing the wheel, and all together it's comping the dress and the grind and then moving down in one fluid motion. So last year we did a one inch depth of cut with Jesse on the blown Plano Mad XT. This is gonna be a blown profile mat and it excels at profile grinding. That's one of the main reasons why we have more horsepower. This machine's got 87 horsepower compared to the last one at what, 33. So if you remember in that last video where we did the one inch cut, we had to stop like halfway in. And as we were going through, we had to slow our feed rate down because the wheel was loading up. But the continuous dresser on this one, it stays sharp the whole time. So you never have to worry about that. Golly, man. Oh my God, dude. Inch and a half depth of cut. Look how clean the wheel looks. That's all thanks to the continuous dresser. The coolant line Trevor did, phenomenal work. Look the amount of swarf that came off of that. So you can see the grit from the wheel, which is blue, coming right off the wheel and mixed with the swarf that came out of the inch and a half depth of cut. Well, how'd it go? Dude, craziest depth of cut in my entire life. The wheel didn't explode, and I thought for sure your coolant nozzle would explode, but your V matched up perfectly to the wheel. Dude, I knew this thing wasn't gonna explode. I mean, it's literally reinforced with carbon fiber. It's super strong. And that just goes to show that in order to solve problems that nobody else can, you have to have the right technology. A $60 billion company tried to do this exact same thing, and they failed. And it's because they didn't have the strength of Mark Forge continuous carbon fiber 3D printed parts. Man, I'm absolutely stoked this came out right. So an inch and a half depth of grind in one pass without breaking the machine, without exploding a grinding wheel, Trevor actually did something right for once and his coolant nozzle didn't explode. It came out absolutely perfect. Yeah, and I'm honestly shocked Chris didn't break this machine doing this grind either. It's a testament to United Grinding and to Mark Forge that we were able to print a plastic coolant nozzle, reinforce with carbon fiber, then pump 80 gallons a minute of coolant through it without it exploding. If this is the craziest depth of cut you've ever seen on a profile grinder, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Boom. Boom. Can you come look at my, my part I'll first? inspect this. Yeah. I know. I know that. What is smoke? That piece of the wheel? No, that piece of the wheel. Those are chips. Those are chips. <laughs>